adjust it. There we go. Sorry, it was laying on something, so it was kind of like not even or not as even as it could be. I'm just trying to. I'm doing the most, y'all. I'm doing the most. So, this is the second video I said would come about. Second video. So, um, uh, if you're trying to figure out why I'm wearing the same outfit, I said it two videos ago. So, anyway, back to the second part of this kind of analysis of the film yes i'm playing free so it helps to it helps me to organize my mind so one of the issues that i think a lot of that actually no one person did bring up someone actually brought this up but not in, in the same exact context as me and even so a million people make the same video and so i'm gonna make the same i'm not gonna make the same exact video um i did want to add my perspective onto this idea though um so at the end of the video at the end of the movie, sorry, Black Panther, in case you forgot what we're talking about, I didn't read the title. At the end of the video, at the end of the movie, sorry, before the post credit scene, you see uh, Sherry and uh, T'Challa in front of the building where T'Challa's um, dad killed his uncle. And she's like, they're tearing it down, it's good, I'm glad. And then they're like, they're not tearing it down. He bought a bunch of buildings and it'll be the first Wakanda International Outreach Center and then uh, Nakia will see the social outreach and then he then uh, Sherry will see the will um, spearhead the science and information exchange and she's excited and yay um, part of me was like whoa one of the issues is like those buildings are condemned you could have also made them affordable housing right you could have just because that's what they were they were housing buildings um, but there's the other part in the beginning of the uh, film that I want to kind of talk about that looks at how this still isn't the actualization of Sherry's idea, not Sherry, of uh, Nakia's idea. So I'm actually going to have to find her. I'm going to have to find her. No. So they're arguing about, um, you know, you know, that she has to leave. Um, and she's, you know, I can, uh, she's like, I came to support my father. You know, if I'm my calling, there are too many people in need. I can't turn a blind eye. She can't be happy in Wakanda. And then he says, you know, what do you want Wakanda to do about it? And she says, share what we have. You know, we could provide aid and access to technology and refuge to those who need it, to other countries who need it. We could do it better. We're not like, and then he says, we're not like those other countries uh, Nakia and then she said we you know uh, Wakanda is strong enough to help others and protect ourselves at the same time so that is her idea right so let's break down her her idea at the very at the pretty much the start of the film after um, he gets her off her mission um, from her mission um, which is kind of related to like saving you know these trafficked girls her idea is really about letting people in not just like in this kind of oh let's pe let, we I want people to know about Wakanda her idea is physically letting people take refuge in Wakanda, right? And, you know, his fear, of course, is them losing their way of life. And she's like, no, I think that we are strong enough to, you know, we have a strong enough history to withstand others coming into the country and them living, you know, yes, they can still live through their, I guess, and this part I'm speculating on, still live through their cultural things. They wouldn't have to fully assimilate to Wakandan life, they could still have their cultural traditions that maybe they have been persecuted for, right? So like if we're thinking about um, different um, ethnic and racial minorities that have been persecuted for their beliefs, then they would still be able to live those beliefs that they have been persecuted for in a better, safer place, um, but not in a way that alters um, right society. So her idea is not just a, a kind of idea about outreach right it's more it's very much about bringing people in and that does not ever get actualized in the movie it doesn't it never gets actualized in the movie because at the end nikia is doing the social outreach yes but they're still working within this very western framework of helping people Right, so her idea, literally, she literally goes on missions and she does very direct aid to end an issue. What he is doing and with T'Challa and what she will be doing later on in the, in, I guess in the next one or whatever, 
Um, but she, what she winds up doing later on after he buys those buildings is not only are you not letting people in Wakanda, right? Because you are building these buildings nowhere near Wakanda. Um, but you're also, but what you're also doing is saying, yeah, we're going to reach out to you, but we're not necessarily solving the problem, right? We're going to have this agency, just like all other agencies, and we're going to work through this very Western framework of not-for-profit work. And so there's a reason it's like, so some people, not some people, it's like there's a an ideology behind the not-for-profit industrial complex. And so what that means is it kind of is a critique of not-for-profit industries. So of course, not-for-profits do a lot of good work, but a lot of that good work is overshadowed by the kind of gross um, inequality that some perpetuate. So there are some not profit organizations, not small, not really small ones. Like let me talk about large, super large not profit organizations that take a lot of money from people that are donated. You may not know how much money your not for profit organization is actually giving to the people it says it's supposed to help. And that's something you should be leery of, right? You should look at kind of the bigger an organization gets, it's seeming like disproportionate, like a disproportionate amount um, is going further up the ladder, right? That's one issue. Another issue is the division of labor versus the division of money. So when you work for a not-for-profit organization, a lot of them ask for volunteers, um, not because they cannot pay them, right? But they're pulling at your heartstrings like, oh, do it for people, do it for people. But if you see who the head of some of these organizations are and how much they're making versus the people at the bottom, they might as well be a corporation, right? So you, in some organizations that are like public services, I have a friend who works for one, she's like, the, the salary doesn't go up, even though it should adjust for inflation, the salary doesn't go up unless you get a newer position. And that's not fair because it doesn't take into account the experience of a person, right? It's more like, well, you know what? We'd rather you quit. We lose this institutional knowledge and someone have to start all over again and building their base all over again than to pay you more, um, pay you based on the value of your knowledge, right? So they'd rather just, again, like I said, start again, work the, the kind of kinks out with another person rather than actually pay someone more, right? Versus you see the person who's at the top of these not for profits making a ton of money. Um, that's one. Um, then you have some not profit organizations that own that are very discriminatory and actually don't they do they do they do disproportionately more harm than good in terms of what you think they're doing. Um, that's one. Another is that always remember this. Always, always, always remember this, especially with large not-for-profit organizations. I want you to never forget this. They are never going to create a model that puts them out of business. And I mean the business of what, because like, don't just think about it, oh, this is just not-for-profit volunteers. This is a business. The not-for-profit industrial complex is a business. So. What I'm trying to say here, not just within the context of the film, but within the context of everything else, they are never going to create a solution. So like if you have homelessness, homelessness is a huge issue everywhere. Homelessness is an issue in Canada where people can freeze to death outside, right? But a, a program is never going to be in place to put itself out of business. Never. It is never working to put itself out of business and a not-for-profit world depending on how large the organization is is a big business it is a business that functions in many ways the same way a corporation functions and in many ways has the same issues that a corporation has so let me let me explain what i mean so for instance the human rights campaign recently their ceo stepped down because she was caught saying the n-word multiple times you would think and she's a white woman, I believe, yes, white woman. Um, and you would think that, well, you know, if you're working on the human rights campaign and you do social justice work and outreach, that you would understand that, you know, certain things you shouldn't say, right? Certain things are off limits, um, you know, something like that. But no. just like Papa John, <laughs> right, of this corporation, and just like Papa John, she's gone, right? She, she is gone, but at the same time, the human rights campaign has had a lot of 
issues lobbied against it um, on the higher level, not really on the, the, the ground level in terms of the people who work in kind of the um, like the offices and things like that, but like the larger aspect. Red Cross takes 50% of your donation off the top. I want you to know that now. As much good as they do, they keep half. And you know how I know? So when the um, the tsunami happened, uh, one of them, in, in Japan when I was an undergrad, um, we wanted to do um, outreach work with the Red Cross, and then they told us that. And we were like, oh, hell to the no. Like, are you kidding me? Like, oh yeah, it goes to administrative costs. What kind of administration do you have, right? And it's, again, not going to the people on the bottom. It disproportionately is funneled to the people at the top. And so I, I want us to always remember that, right? So that's the first thing. You know, how much of this outreach is actually going to get to the people it's supposed to reach out to? That's one. Two, it's, it's much easier to really throw kind of money at an issue and yet not really because so for instance Nakia's solution was very much about like, like I say bringing people in and that is much more altruistic than going and just saying hey I want you I will help you but from a distance right my help my resources are conditioned on distance Whereas her help and resources were physically like, I have a bowl of rice, we all have some rice in this bowl. Like, we all get a grain, right? Whereas the other solution is more like, I have a grain, I have a bowl of rice, I do. I will put a spoon out of rice for you to eat, right? I will be the one to feed you. Um, so it's much, it's much less altruistic than, you know, Nakia's actual solution. Um, and a lot of people believe Nakia was right, I do too. The other, the other aspect of it that we're also not looking at is, one, there's not not reach into in Wakanda, right? There is no talk of any kind of comprehensive or any remote. I'm not even comprehensive. I'm not looking for a comprehensive plan in like a two-hour Marvel movie, right? I'm, but I am looking for a way to help people, for instance, on the continent in the surrounding countries. Where's that plan? And while I understand the idea of reaching out to the through the diaspora, especially because. We're talking about Eric Killmonger, which I talked about more in the last video. The One of the issues that we are not dealing with is the creation of distance for a solution. The, the main issue, though, that I think a lot of people are overlooking, it's not just distance. It is the country you're working with. Because if this was in Wakanda and run by Wakandans and done the Wakandan way, I do truly believe it could be a whole lot better. Right, you know, Nakia, she really believes in the Wakandan people. She believes that, like she says, Wakanda is strong enough, I'm going to re quote verbatim, Wakanda is strong enough to help others and protect ourselves at the same time. She is saying that these solutions are coming internally from the country, working with and through the people. This solution does not, this solution of creating this outreach center in Oakland is working with and through the federal government of the United States of America. The very federal government of the United States of America that created Eric Killmonger, the very federal government of the United States of America that profited off of chattel slavery, the very United States government, like the very government of the United States of America that continually and disproportionately, no matter who's president, continually and disproportionately you know, just has creates and perpetuates inequality through their own spending practices. You know, does not have enough, all of a sudden doesn't have enough money for social welfare programs, but always has enough money for war. Never has enough money for veterans who are the highest, the high, in terms of the highest rate of suicide, it's veterans. And there are a lot of veteran-run organizations that were created to help combat this, but they shouldn't have to exist because the federal government is not taking care of the people that it always, there's always an excuse when they talk about money. They're like, we don't have money to create, um, to, you know, to help these others, right? Other people, we don't have money to help others because we have to, you know, what about veterans? What about veterans? But whenever there's a time to, or whenever there's a, a way to help veterans, they never do. And I say this as someone who is descended from, like, my great-grandfather was, you know, was in World War II, 
one of his brothers was in Korea and another one of his brothers was in Vietnam. And that's only on my like my my like yeah my mother's mother's line right and then on my mother's father's line my great grandmother I mean maybe yeah my paternal great grandmother um no 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 not my father's my mother's father's mother one of her sons died in Vietnam right he didn't become a veteran he became a casualty of war right he he died um you know and this is around the time of drafts right so you have to go so you mean to tell me that throughout all of this time when you could create a better society for the very people you're always talking about you you don't you choose not to and that's the country you want to fucking partner with that's the country you want to put your eggs in a basket you want to make this your first attempt your first attempt at doing better than these other organizations and you work with a country that cannot even take care of its own people. Not that it can't, that refuses to take care of its own people. You are explicitly, like you know what the United States is, right? You know what the United States has done. T'Challa is not stupid. He is one of the smartest and richest people in the Marvel Universe. Forget the Marvel Cinematic Universe. One of the smartest and richest people in the Marvel Universe. His father, if you read the comics, his father was also very aware of the pitfalls of the United States government right and people he's very aware of how people see wakanda how people see wakandans how people see people from the continent he is very aware of these things right because like i said again he is very well educated so you mean to tell me that with all this education you completely looked over the much better solution of helping others you know right next to you right you explicitly reached out and you're working with otherwise you wouldn't be able to operate your not-for-profit if you weren't working with the government in some way and you choose to work with this government why to not to no longer create eric killmongers eric killmonger is a product of the very government that you have any cooperation with and that's the problem the problem is your cooperation because your cooperation in some ways is is a collusion of their policies by working with them you're not saying oh i endorse every policy right or all the policies you know i don't know about but you are because if you were such a critic of the policies right in a way that you should be of the united states federal government in the history of the united states federal government then you wouldn't be working with them one and two if you were such a vocal critic they wouldn't want to work with you remember that it goes both ways. You wouldn't be getting a visa. No matter how well you feel, you wouldn't be getting a visa. You wouldn't be traveling. You, There would be, if you truly understood, or if you truly had this, this desire, then it would definitely not be actualized in this way. But what you are trying to do is feed people from a very, feed people what you want from a very long spoon instead of letting them in and saying, what do you need? And I think that that's the, the problem when we're talking about how Nakia's dream is never actualized. And even in, even right after, in, um, in, uh, if you haven't seen Infinity War, psh, go see it, right? Um, even in Infinity War, when, when Okoye is like, I, you know, we should, when, I, when we talk about opening up Wakanda, this is not what I meant. They still didn't fucking do any outreach. They didn't do any outreach within their own country because they haven't yet because she was like joking about and i thought about the olympics or a starbucks there's still no sign of this like refugee outreach there's still no sign of this you know there's no talk of those things that nakia talked about you know from you know the wakandan people actually putting in the work um on the ground right and it's again you know what i don't just hold the kingdom, you know, the top of the kingdom responsible, right? The fish rots from the head down, yes, but people in Wakanda have access to amazing technology. They know what's going on. There's this one that was so funny, was like, so wait, no one's ever taken selfies in Wakanda? Like, people know about Wakanda in the age of social media? Like, no one's ever been like, like, Wakanda doesn't do, like, cultural exchanges. They don't have exchange to this, which they did, because remember in, um, was this? It wasn't Winter Soldier, was it? I can't remember the one. No, it wasn't Witcher Soldier. It was. Oof. 
I think it was Age. No, it wasn't Age of Ultron either. I can't remember which one it was. Which of the Avengers? Films